Oh, so that way well, we're doing these summer episodes and I want to make sure I stay in my summer vibe. <laughs> so, you know, I get my I got my sunscreen on there, reapply, go to the beach, jump in the water, dry off, immediately put it back on. Because that's what you got to do, man. So, so you are you covering it? In, so you buy those in bulk. I do. I have to. You go to the old Costco and you get like 45 cans of, of spray and then you apply. Also important when you spray, you rub it in after you spray. You don't just let the spray exist on you because then it's all spotty and weird and it's a oh, whole okay. thing. It's not, it's not it's not like airbrushing a car then where I want to get that real slick. No, you want to rub it in. No, you you got to get it in because if not, you know, you'll get like a spotted yeah. weird sunburn and we're live. Okay. Well, hello everyone and welcome to another super summer episode of Unsealed and Revealed. Clapping. Yay. Are we clapping? Are we putting on sunscreen? Is that what we're doing? Great. Uh, now I'm your host, Jeff May, and with me as always, I have our resident six scale enthusiast slash expert in all around vintage treasure to have guy <laughs> Clender. hi how you doing bud i i feel fantastic thank you so much that was uh, a, a wonderful introduction to be to be called vintage <laughs> you are i hate to break it to you but, i, I uh, am quite vintage <laughs> uh and of course we have our amazing and diligent moderator cassidy over there on the ones and twos and she will be taking your questions comments and concerns through all the live channels Cass, how you doing over there fantastic super good super happy to be here super happy not super vintage not yet not yet not yet no. save, that, save that for me and guy mm -hmm. uh now today <laughs> i'm very 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 excited that we get to do this and so quickly too I'm, I'm so excited we got this piece so soon um today we are looking at the boba fett vintage color version six scale from hot toys now you remember this because guy and i were lucky enough to introduce this to you back on star wars day earlier this year and it was featured last last month in a quick episode of Unsealed Light. And today we get to look at it in depth. Isn't that exciting? I'm Guy, are you it. excited? I, I am. Oh I am. This is this is a really fun thing to be able to to show off. Agreed. Now, as you can see, just like normal, Guy Clender is back in the studio and he is feeling great and looking great. Guy, you look good. Well, thank you. You feeling good? I, I am. I am. I'm trying to eat better and uh, watch Joshy G's exercise videos. <laughs> oh, God, they get me going. Now, as uh, we are, of course, continuing to practice social distancing as well as being safe, my man, Super Producer Sam, is behind the camera. He's more than six feet away, and he is wearing a mask. Nobody else is in the studio with Guy waving. Did you see that? He was waving. <laughs> Hi, Sam. I miss him. I miss him a whole bunch. Now, as always, we are doing our best to ensure the good health of ourselves and others. And, of course, we hope that you are as well. Uh, now, beyond that, Guy, I'm going to need you to tear into this baby because I can't wait to get a good, in-depth look at this piece. This is this is a lot of fun. Um, we're going to take a look. Here's our overhead shot. What I am uh, really digging on is this is a new style of packaging um, for these Hot Toys figures, and I love what they've done with it. This is a much thicker cardboard than we are used to on these boxes. Um, we accentuate that with the classic uh, double bar in kind of that metallic look. We've got a bright chromed uh, vintage color emblazoned on there, along with our 40th anniversary of Empire Strikes Back, our Hot Toys and our Movie Masters, and then our Sideshow exclusive um, sticker on there. That's that the is, top part, and it is a that, classic window box. I was going to say that is some solid accoutrement for this piece. Right it here. is, the and that's really great. That's kind of the fun, and I have a feeling there will be people that will display it in box. Um, that, that, that they will probably do it that way. The photo on the front here is of the figure, and then they've added in a flame effect right hmm. there. On the side here, we get, an, again, kind of a nod to that classic style. I'm gonna turn it to the side here so it might be a little bit easier, but you've got your text, and it's all in the same font style as our early action figures, our, our mail away uh, at the time. This is, yeah, I remember you were asking me before we started filming if I did do the mail away for Boba Fett. Yes. And I crushed, I crushed you yes. by telling you that you hadn't been born yes. when that was happening. You definitely put me in my vintage uh, place at that point. Um, yeah. <laughs> on, our, on the back here, we've got a really nice shot of the figure and they've put it over a bit of the Cloud City background with uh, the Slave One craft. And then on the side... Another great shot of the figure himself. Now, what I 
really want to open with uh, having this piece's existence, mm -hmm. just the general existence of this piece. It's a very fun piece. It is. And that is something I know we take uh, a lot of people take collecting very seriously and they're very hardcore about it and they want it to look exactly one way or exactly the other. It has to look like this actor or it has to have this perfect weathering. I like that we can do something fun, like taking the Boba Fett style that we're used to and adding the vintage colors to it. I'm very excited about this. This is one of my favorite Hot Toys pieces. That's what I, that's what really sets this one apart for me is that, I mean, all of the toys for me are fun, but this is that, that lighthearted, enjoyable, uh, fun aspect. Now here, what I want to show you is kind of the upper box, the two flaps on it. You're going to have a small little sticker there I've removed that I could uh, open the box on. You're going to be opening this figure from the top. Normally I'll open them from the bottom. However, this one here is going to be glued. So you are going to be opening it from the top. Like I said, this is that thicker cardboard. One of the reasons I usually open them from the bottom is with the uh, kind of the thinner box. I don't want to ever crease those. So then you've got your two standard flaps inside. And then we're going to slide our tray out and I'm going to set this incredible art box down to the side for me here. All right. Take off our upper tray here. There he is. There he is. And here is the instructions. And uh, as we showed in the light episode, this was something when they first let me take a look at this figure uh, and I had no idea what I was going to see. Um, the instructions just gave me a huge smile and and I want to show why again well here, they are instructions guy does ex love exactly him but take a look at this from the overhead here is it is a replica of the Empire Strikes Back poster oh look at that isn't that kind of well, neat um, and it is kind of in a, a brassy um, bronze-esque uh, color and it's a great it's really neat to have that. Yeah. And then, it, 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 you know what? It's almost like they, it's the yellowing of what a piece from 1978 yeah. looked like if you've left it in a box for 40 Probably. years. Probably. And then so that's on a, the back a here, color choice. I love it. Uh, we have the instructions themselves. Now, there's not a lot as far as instructions to uh to see here uh but there are some uh in there's some information that's important the jetpack is done with magnets however uh it does have two little clips as well we're going to get into that um but you're going to want to use them in conjunction not just the magnet it's also going to put our little equipment tools and tell us a little bit there so i'm going to set this off to the side uh, as i love those instructions and let's take him out of the pack just set him up that. like so. All right. God, now, I love that color scheme so much. This is fun. It's that that gray blue that we saw back when we first had a peek at who this character was going to be and in toy form. It had this color. Now this has been updated that it's a little more photo real, uh, particularly with the helmet. We do have the the uh, dent on the top there. Well, sure. You know, um, and it's a little more true to it, but you've got that dark rust brown on the underside. Yeah. And that deep maroon. On the, the, the color scheme is really what, what pulls this piece out and makes it pop and makes this one of my favorite things Hot Toys has done. I know everybody has their own personal preferences on like, oh, it looks just like, you know, this actor. It looks like, you right. know, Thor looks like Chris Hemsworth. Isn't that great? Which is cool and everything like that. But this is such a throwback to me growing up, but synthesized with what I love now. So it's like, I love, you know, the six scales. I love what they do with them, but I love that they're reminding me of being a child. Like, yeah. Hard. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that's, that's it's always a huge factor in, uh, in this, uh, kind of thing. And that's why this one is so much fun. Um, so even as we take a look back here, so let's take a look at that back because I'm going to be working on it in a second once I put the uh, pack on. You see here you've got your two clips and then behind it as uh, it will be a magnet. This here, holding it next to it, is your jet pack. 
You see you have the two clips up there and there's a magnet inside there. So um, mm -hmm. this is when I use the tweezers uh, to kind of lift the uh, clips up when I lay that down. But let's take a look at the back of the figure while we have it removed. Okay, you have his unique style of cape with the stripe. You see the aging they've done in there. I love the beat up aging. Yeah, but it's also the, the, the deliberate um, mm -hmm. paint striping that oh, they yes. put on there which uh, matches it up to the 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 three and three quarter mm -hmm. exactly and then uh in this is a wire okay you do have wiring on there so you get okay. a little bit more of the uh posability uh on there to uh do it a little more lifelike um on the back there you're also seeing all of the attention to detail on all of the straps around his belt and other a little and that little that little is straps. i was going to say that is a cycling back to the sort of the, the highlight of this piece which is the sort of hot toys sculpt and accessorizing with the the vintage paint swap yeah exactly um gorgeous look on there and you see on the back we've got those wookie braids uh hanging down in the nice real tight um braiding on those and those of course come across over into the front. Then on the front, we've got our calculator uh, bit there. And then his logo. His logo is also on the right side. You've got the dings and dents and scratched paint on the yellow. And then his emblem on that side. Did you, um, when you got a look at this, did you bust out a three and three quarter inch, uh, an old oh, yeah. vintage one and, and compare like the dents and the dings to see how yes. close they were? Or? Yeah. Now back then, um, I would, I would bet that they kind of had an idea. They probably went off cause we had been introduced to, to this character in the animated, uh, uh, holiday special. So mm -hmm. in that one there, he's a little bit different. Uh, and so I think they kind of went with that. So he was a very smooth character. There weren't any uh, dents and more of a straight, uh, straight on larger color. So that's why what's fun with this one here is we, we get this unique uh, combination between the two, between more of a photo reel, uh, which is what Hot Toys is uh, great for, and then uh, into that classic style, which is, uh, which is a lot of fun. God, it's so good. Another really fun part. is, no, we didn't have this on our old, is that is articulated down. I like that. All so, right. uh, you know, as we are about 15 minutes in, I'm yeah. going to hit up Cassidy and say, Cassidy, how are we doing? Love for how it looks right now. <laughs> um, you know, a lot of people are just super, super fascinated with it. Happy to be here. It's, it's a very fun piece of collecting. Uh, it, it, I can't stress enough that, like, it really does sort of remove that aggressive seriousness that we have with our collecting and, it, and it's something that's just a fun vintage memory that brings you back to like oh yeah this is why i do this this yes. is why i love doing this it's because as a child i loved doing this you know and 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 that's that's what it really does encompass what this uh, is all about what, what collecting and especially hot toys and sideshow are all about which is you know, not taking everything too seriously and just having fun and, and remembering that these are toys. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that, that that's that's the case. This one is um, so much fun. Uh, I think for the the adult collector who remembers the moment they you know ran to the mailbox to uh, to uh, get this one. Yeah. So, so it looks like um, the extra special attention needs to be paid to the um, to the backpack while you are putting yes, it together. Yes. Um, if we can see that from above uh, here, is they are an elastic. Okay. So oh, it's a kind okay. of a cloth loop with a bit of pull, and then yeah. the little square. Now, because there's not um, uh, locked into a place, they do need to have some movement. Um, they will take a little bit of. Uh, wiggle once and you've got it on you'll be fine 
And this is where sort of we mentioned Guy has the tweezers and things like that, that mm -hmm. sometimes there are tools that are important to getting um, pieces put through. And uh, tweezers are a perfect example of that. I know Guy loves his microfiber cloth yes. um, for cleaning pieces as well. And uh, as Guy is working through there, I will like to um, say that uh, about this piece, um, we do have that articulated range finder that Guy was showing us before. We have the light green cape with the weathering effect. Um, the brown belts that are a sort of a, a faux leather, the leather-like with the pouches, the jetpack that we have here, which is both clip-on and magnetic. Uh, and I'm guessing, if I was going to guess, Cassidy, the question that you're about to get a lot, so I can, I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip the line and ask it myself, guy. That jetpack that you're working on, is it going to fire that missile, or are we going to do a recall? We we are not going to fire the missile. Yeah, okay, I figured it. It's a non-firing. It, non firing um uh as as was our uh vintage figure then as well yeah um, that was a that's a unique period in toy history uh, yeah yeah that was the that was really one of the first moments where they were like oh we should probably we don't want this weapon to actually hurt anybody yeah we should uh we're gonna we're gonna change things up a little bit um all um, right so there, there is also uh real quick a blaster rifle the sidearm uh, the survival knife, the sonic beam weapon, and the anti-security blade. Uh, and uh, this is available for pre-order now and is set to ship any time from now during this month to September. Yes. Now let's take a look at those um, little bits that we'll put into his um, little front pouches. I'm going to set this off for a second. <laughs> now, um, whoop, I'll, uh, I'll get back to that in just a moment. Um, but in your tray, you are going to have his four little bits. Okay, I'm going to set those here to show them off. And then this is one thing that's in your instructions. And your instructions are going to tell you where to place these four little bits. All right. Um, which is kind of nice. You've got a, an A, B, C, D, and, and then you go. Let me show you Exactly shows me shows me where to put those in, uh, and this is just a little fun uh, extra bit that they've they've done to uh, to have you you get to do a little bit more. These could have already been in it, but it is yeah. adding to the play, which is where, yeah, where this thing, one is is really fun. Is that that play the piece? Is the pieces that were previously molded on on the original action figure are now something that you can finally play with. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Now they now they are finally uh, on there. So we're gonna slide those all in like so. Uh, now these are stitched little tight pockets. Uh, we've talked about this uh, before on some of the episodes. Um, I will sometimes use a little. Uh, little wooden like uh, coffee stir stick and you can use that mm -hmm. yeah. to kind of open those up a little bit because um, they will be a nice snug and did I get it you got there you're getting there it is funny too that when we when we talk about guy and guys sort of enthusiasm and expertise in dealing with six uh, six skill pieces you'll notice how careful he is when he is going through there I'd rather I'd rather you take three minutes extra yeah. with a piece and be patient with getting jetpacks on, getting holsters open, et cetera, than to quickly tear through it. And I think take a lesson from Guy in that, that that you do you should absolutely be taking your time with these pieces. Now, uh, thank you. Sam's uh, zooming in there so you can see how that clip goes in there. So it's going to take a little bit of finagling. Like I said, you're going to want to hold, uh, hold it with the tweezers. Um, you'll, But you'll get this. And then that's... Uh, once it's once it's doubly secured with both the clips there, as well as the magnet, you're good to go. Okay, so now let's take a look at him with pack and all his and all his glory and all his uh, glory. And I saw when you were putting out the all the right. That's the EE three blaster, right? Like the rifle. Yes. That we yes. Have, is it the the direct EE three? Yeah. Mm hmm. Let's uh, All right. let's show you the last of the uh, deals in here. Here you're going to have your classic style base with your Boba Fett 
nameplate on there. Uh, and this one here has a bit of that. Uh, is that is that the um, executor floor base? Yep, it looks a lot like the executor floor to me. That uh, being the the super star destroyer, Vader's uh, Vader star destroyer. Exactly. Um, so I'm going to just set those down there to take a look at. We're going to spin them around so you can see the difference. There we go. Let's. We've got a great view there. You got incredible texture down on these boots with those little I always front. love those spikes on the boots. Yeah, that's a that's an interesting thing. A guy with spikes on his shoes. Um, that is, that's a dangerous individual. Dangerous individual. Um, now, the two here on the knee, they have an elastic on the back that's holding them. I'm gonna spin it around so you can see, but that does allow you to move them a little bit when we go to do Promotion, any yeah. posing and to make sure it's just in the place that you want. You see there's the little elastic straps. It's also giving you a little bit better shot of how uh, great the detail is on uh, the uh, back belts there. Yeah. That always makes, you know what's funny, and this is a weird thing for me, but I've always had a thing in my head about Boba Fett's knee pads because they always looked, I always envisioned them being solid all the way around. And in my head, I was always like, well, how does he bend his knees? Exactly. So <laughs> that they just, have like a fastener that's... behind it so that you can create a knee bend. Yeah, you're like, that doesn't seem pleasant. Yeah, you can get some nice volleyball knee pads or something like that. Those work. Give him, give him something for crying out loud. Um, but yeah, this makes way more sense. <laughs> it. It does. It does. All right. So there we've got on the side here, you've got his holster. Okay. I've slid the gun in there. Now there is, you can either just slide it in, but there's also the little clasp yeah. right there. Now, is over. that like the same burnt orange as the gauntlets? Yes, it is. Let me hold it right okay. next to, um, that's the nice part is instead of going with, you know, 22 different colors or something like that, we have gone with that classic style where you would have had, you know, four or five different uh, colors. That was it. So mm -hmm. you can see them next to each other. See it next yeah, to can't here. Go too very, crazy. very close Great. Uh, to those. And that goes in there and then it's got a little, um, uh, little strap that it will go over and clap, clasp in there. All right. Uh, like so. Now on the back here, these are also movable. Ooh. Okay. Not something that we saw in our in our uh, older toy. No, a nice addition, but you could imagine him catapulting himself toward you and then kneeing you in the face with one of those pretty rough knee pads. I don't, it would be I, a Wow, that's uh that's intense. It would be, it would be an event. But yeah, I'm, I'm intense. <laughs> um so now let's take a look uh, at those wrist gauntlets. These like the kneecap are loose on there that give you the mobility on there. Here you're going to see that there is that cord that goes up. This actually kind of pops out and then you yeah. can set back up in there. Uh, hey, this guy, is a cloth guy, piece, not a wire. I was going to say before we go into mobility, because I have a feeling that's mm -hmm. going to be sort of a good chunk of this. I'm going to hit up Cassidy. Cassidy, do we have anything about um, the, the detailing or the outfit itself? We do actually, we have a question from Gustavo Contreras on Facebook who wants to know, um, like what are the main differences between this figure and the previously released Hot Toys um, Empire Boba? Is it just the paints, stuff like that? Um, in, in short, we're gonna say yes. Um, the main difference in this one here is really that paint style, okay? Um, but we do have some other uh, subtle differences uh, in the figure, but the majority of the change is going to be um, in the vintage coloring, uh, which is what sets it apart. I mean, it sets it apart in this react. I don't have the Empire Correct. version of that. I'm getting, I'm getting this one. Yeah, uh, this is this is a lot of fun. Because of, it's because of the palette swap, specifically. I, I love that sort of vibe that we have in there. Um, I, God, I really like it. Now, um, before we get into mobility now, for mm -hmm. those of you who have just joined us, we are looking at the Boba Fett vintage color version, six scale figure from Hot Toys. Now, uh, also don't forget, if you like what you're seeing and you want to see more, and of course you do, 
Make sure to subscribe and hit that notifications bell on your YouTube channel so you won't miss out on any of our quality content. We have loads of giveaways and events going on all the time, so follow us on our social channels like at Collect Sideshow on Twitter and at Sideshow Collectibles on Instagram to keep an eye out for those. And speaking of content, today, right after this episode at 11 a.m. Pacific, Amy and Paul are back with the Comics Hall, and this will be a slightly shorter episode to let you know what they've been reading while they were away. So we're welcoming back the Comics Hall, one of my favorite shows on here, so I'm glad we can be there. And they're going to reveal some of what you can expect from their full relaunch that starts August 26th. Uh, we're so excited to see our resident comic book fans back in action and make sure to stick around after the show. Now, Guy, I'm going to need you to tell me about that gaggle of hands that you've <laughs> just played. Yes. Now, uh, the hands that he's going to come uh, out of the box on, the right is more of a holstering, um, holding uh, weapon hand, and his left in a bit more relaxed. The ones that are coming uh, inside your tray, you've got both a right and left fist. You also have a right and left more of a open, uh, straight out hand. And then we have this additional one here. Okay, and the reason we have that is because that partners up with the other gun hand I told you about. So we hold, gives it that support for his blaster. All right, when we swap those out, let's take a look at that blaster. This was such a very neat weapon. Um, the weapons of Star Wars have always been really fun that, that they take existing things and modify them in, in some unique fashion. Uh, but yeah, got, I... The uh, EE three is a really classic. It's one of every like everybody's. I mean, uh, between the EE three and Han's blaster rifle, I'd say those are the two big ones that yeah. people really, yeah, I think really. This, the, for me, the the uh, the DL forty four, the Han's blaster, this one here, and um, the Jawa's ion cannons. I those yeah. those three for me, I always thought were so neat. Um, the blunderbuss of exactly. the uh, Wars world, yeah. Um, but as you can see right up on top there, um, you've got that aging in that metal from the little brass uh, bits to the heat dispersion on the nose cone of it or muzzle um, where it has that that uh, coloring uh, on it as well. And you do have that leather strap on there, which is kind of fun. So he does have his classic weaponry. All right, so let's talk some articulation. We're gonna have our ball jointed neck giving us full range of motion on the head, which is great. Plenty of up and down if you need to do like so. Okay, so even under that ball joint, we've got a little bit of play as well. For the arm, you get a good straight up to the side do those shoulder pads lift they have, they, are, they also yeah. are elastic they are connected to the chest uh okay. and back plate so they will lift in accordance to that yeah and so he will go up right about there that's about our although yeah i would say this doesn't have the limitations of say an iron man or a stormtrooper where you have armor on armor right you know this is armor on on cloth correct absolutely correct um with our There you go. A full 90 on that. And does he do old timey stretches? Because we don't have as much armor, he can't. This looks like a bit of a dance. Yeah. <laughs> that is. He's, I believe he's flossing. I is, believe that's what is the this, call it these is this days. One of, is this one of those uh, dance moves? Um, uh, as we've said that I am vintage and or really borderlining on the antique. Um, whatever this particular dance move is that uh, the youth yep. is doing, they'll have to tell me about. Yeah, between the two of us, neither of us should be commenting on current pop culture fads. No, I no. feel like that is something that we would be safe to say. Maybe, <laughs> maybe Jeff and Guy aren't the aren't the like <laughs> aren't really oh, look, aren't the ones doing that... the Macarena. Like uh, uh, we're yeah, exactly. <laughs> Do I you think know I've the electric slide. Yeah, I've aged out of being interesting, involving new stuff. Um, so let's take a look uh, and move down toward the next articulation point, and that is our uh, hip and waist turn. 
Okay, you do have a nice turn in the waist. What I'm gonna try and do when I'm doing that is actually kind of holding around here and not pushing against the, uh, the pack. So is that that chest plate and uh, is not connected to the to the groin plate as well? Uh, uh, Correct. As well. Correct. These are attached to the suit. These are not removable pieces, um, but uh, they are not locked together. So this is not connected to here. So yes, you do have that nice trunk twist. We get a very nice splay to the side because we do have what's more or less a kind of a flight suit, jumpsuit underneath. So mm -hmm. we get a good wider stance. We do have our knee, as we said before, these are able to move out of the way, but we can do a full 90 on there. Now, since I have that up, why don't we go yeah. for it, guy? Okay, Give you ready? Me that tread watch Bam. how's that for vintage tread i'm gonna need you to angle yeah let's let's angle that a little bit because it looked really smooth but then i got a little light on there it there we and go it doesn't i'm gonna i'm gonna kind of twist and turn here so you can see that but it is oh okay yeah look at that going straight little across on it. the tread and then we see that silver for those uh the t the toe spears um uh, underneath there. We also see the elastic that's going to hold on um, the green front uh, panel to the back. They are connected there. Like yeah. so. um, this is a ball jointed on okay, the good. ankle. Now it's a solid piece, okay? It's not cut anywhere in the, because it's a short boot. That wouldn't, there wouldn't be a place to really do a cut. But um, during his, this, this is again, more of his dance moves that we've learned about. Yeah, those classic Boba Fett <laughs> dances. That classic Boba known. Fett dance moves. Um, um, Cassidy, do you have any dance questions for us? Ooh, dance questions. Um, I don't I think, think I see any figure. of those quite yet. How about, <laughs> how about about the figure? Um, at the moment, we are okay on questions when it comes Beauty. to the figure. Yeah. Beauty. Um, you also have your twist on your upper leg oh. as well that's that always dance a would be called the, that's, that's always called a good the point of articulation to uh, to kind of give it a little bit of uh motion and not so well, static well yeah like the, having a, a sort of a leg twist does give you that sort of fighter's stance too mm -hmm. that's a very common thing you know and you, you'd never we always say in in fighting you never have your feet facing the same direction uh and so that slight twist gives it sort of more a professional vibe um what i want to show back here is the pack itself and then a little bit on the helmet um, to show you that this is not all just a solid color. They've actually done a little bit of weathering on it. You can catch yeah. on the edges, but kind of in a vintage style. This isn't as though it's rubbed down to be metal. It's actually be the under color. I like that. that lighter, that lighter gray. And let's take a look at up on the helmet, particularly right back there in between. Thank you for that close up. You see, there's a little bit of that done there as well, and a little bit oh, yeah. up toward the front on the edges, and gives it a little bit of, of to me, uh, it's, it's a little bit, little bit of both. You've got a little bit of that aging and, and the beatenness that the character has, but also that I've been playing with this toy a lot, uh, <laughs> vintage uh, aspect too, which is it kind is, of another neat. It is funny when you look um, for vintage uh, Star Wars action figures, and you are there's always that hunt for the unrubbed Boba Fett. Oh yes, the one that hasn't been um, because the colors were so vibrant on the piece, and that was really the most colorful piece uh, that had come out at the time. That it, it certainly to find a vintage Boba Fett that still has that non paint rub is very yeah, the rare. Non, the non rub. I, so let's take really a look. Like the here. You even have that rub in the the two shoulder pauldrons get a little of that differential of the two different, uh, the way the yellow is there on the edge, see that you see it, it's a, a little lighter as though this toy has been played with and loved. And that's kind of the fun part. Um, also up here, you'll see on the helmet, we've got some of the detailing there. Yeah, I would suggest don't leave this in the sandbox. No, no, no I, try and, I try and avoid, uh, avoid leaving, leaving them in the sandbox. 
Um, yeah, or crashing them together, making a war. Exactly. So it's back, back, back. Um, yeah, like that, the, 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 the sideshow commercial that everybody yes, has a heart attack. Which, which is, I think the reason that that's such a great commercial is that it's absolutely true. It's how we are about it. Yeah. Um, so let's take a look. This is your gauntlet. This is on the left arm. It's in that mustard yellow, the same color that we've seen throughout. But then they've got all of the detail uh, mm. down in here. As I said before, these are also gives you a little bit of motion in there. So when you uh, pose them however you'd like, you can, again, uh, place them however you'd like. Let's... Mm, look at that. I'm going to place our... Yeah blaster yeah i know we let's, let's start looking into um doing some cool posing uh as well because i know we have a, a slightly shortened episode yes um we're not going the full hour in here so i i would uh, i would like to see him um sort of holding that that ee3 blaster getting ready to ready to go for it <laughs> ready to ready to go for it all right so um these are a softer rubber on the hand which allows me to get in there and put the fingers where I need. Okay, so I've just slid that in on the right hand. And as I said, this is adjustable there. So once I get in the position, okay. So we've got like so. This is that other left hand I talked about. We're gonna swap that out. This is kind mm -hmm. of that um, two-handed gun hold that we're doing. See, our good friend Terry is very fast on the Let me boat. tell you, shout out. Yeah, shout out to Terry Smith. But this ties back to what I mentioned before, which is that, guy, you are somebody that has extensive experience in dealing with these and that you do sort of gingerly work with these pieces because, you know, this is, uh, aside from being a toy, this is an investment and, and yep. it's a, a sign of, of, of your love through there. And you do treat them with love. Now, there we go. There's kind of that double hand hole that he can do. And yes, because you have uh, a lot more articulation on this one, you can have it, you know, tied up against his body or own. But what I wanted to do was show the, the in two hand that they do. Yeah. That wouldn't be too far off from how I would be posing the piece. Yeah. Or, I, or there, I might just do like the rigid standing, like mm -hmm. the rigid three and three quarter almost you, you, I guess we'd call it a museum pose, but part of me just, uh, you know, having him pose out like you would a three and three quarter inch figure seems like it would be fun. There's kind of, I like this addition that we can, we can get a little wind, oh, yeah, look at that. a little walk in the wind. Um, yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting a mythos vibe on this one. Yeah, uh, that's, uh, I always cool. like when they do the, the wire in the cape, it just gives it a little bit more life uh, to it. So this is, uh, this is what we've, we've talked about with that. So. As you can see, my backpack, I, while I was wiggling stuff around, I disconnected it. But yeah, it just took that off. You just yeah. got to work on putting it back on there. But uh, that's the fun. I mean, you're you're here to play with it. <laughs> that that yeah. should, should be here. I'm gonna, to, to I'm gonna, I'm gonna lean into Cassidy, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a last call on questions. A last call on questions. Um, <clears throat> currently, at the moment, we actually really don't have anything. Again, we just had a lot of. Love for the figure, yeah. Um, the guy and I, and our and our knowledge of dancing. I mean, we did have a question on YouTube. Um, since you specified dance questions earlier, someone wanted to know <laughs> who would win in a dance battle. Um, if you were watching Boba Fett versus Palpatine versus Han Solo, if that matchup ever happened, Han Solo. Yeah, so yeah, that's what I thought. There's yeah, because yeah. there's going to be a swagger in in the way that he he does that. Yeah, he 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 he'd brush it off, dust it off in that classic like late seventies, like I'm a tough guy, but yeah. now watch me dance yeah. vibe that we were so used to at the time. Um, so now, guy, uh, let's take a look at that. Let's some final posing here. I'm just uh, showing a little bit of the uh, articulation that you you get on those. The, oh, uh, I do like that. I mean, he he was a mercenary. It's it's it, it's interesting to learn all of the different stuff about these uh, characters that we're getting as. Uh, new shows and new things come out um, about them. And I am, I am loving learning Mandalorian lore uh, <laughs> and whether or not he would take his helmet off and such. So 
Um, which, if there is a question, this is not a removable helmet. There's no, no. removable helmet on this. But if that, uh, no, if that, that would just kill Boba Fett. Uh, he's not supposed to do it. We know that. We know, um, we know that much. Well, that's great. I'm glad we got to take a closer look at this because I know that we've only gotten to take a couple of cursory glances mm -hmm. um, at the people. So the fact that we got to do it in depth um, was pretty great. And I'm very excited about that. So, Guy, thank you so much, obviously, oh, thank for, you. For, for this piece. Um, shout out to Cassidy, of course, uh, on the ones and twos, taking all the questions, comments, and concerns. Of course. And, and thank you all so much for joining us. You have been an amazing and interactive audience. Now, if you're interested in any of our giveaways, I'm going to need you to go ahead and check out our Let Your Geek Sideshow Facebook group. It's an awesome group and a welcoming community with tons of Sideshow exclusive news and giveaways. And right now, we're holding a prize pick giveaway. And that's right, where the winner gets to choose one out of six very rare items from franchises like DC, Marvel, and Star Wars. Now, enter before it ends on Thursday, August 27th. And Cassidy is going to drop a link in the chats right now she's gonna do it now it's uh, now we're doing it now now it's now right okay great uh now don't forget today at 11 a.m pacific that's about 15 minutes from now amy and paul are back with the comics hall and you can catch this episode live on all of our social platforms make sure to keep an eye out for season two of get super with joshy g which is coming your way soon i know guy and i have been watching and participating yes. in every episode of that trying to get that shred on <laughs> now thank you all for watching and hanging out with us. We will see you on Monday, August 24th at 10 o'clock in the morning Pacific for another episode of Unsealed and Revealed. Thank you all for watching. And of course, don't forget to let your geek side show. Bye.